Good afternoon, and welcome to the January 23rd, 2018 meeting of the Architectural Review Board. The Architectural Review Board is a nine member board appointed by the City Council and serve on a voluntary basis without compensation. Our procedure for conducting business is a petitioner for each item will be asked to come forward, state your name for the record, and present his or her request. The board will ask any questions they may have. Then anyone wishing to speak to the proposal will be asked to come forward and voice their opinions. Each side will have 10 minutes to speak. Once your request is heard and the board's decision is rendered, you may leave the meeting. However, if you have any questions for staff, please wait until after the meeting is over to ask them or you may con contact staff at the office on the following day. Once public testimony and discussion for a particular item has concluded, the members of the board will deliberate and render its decision. Members with a personal or financial interest in any request are required to recuse themselves from voting. Tonight we have uh, eight members present, enough, and it takes five votes to pass a motion. And because of the number of board members, if you would like to delay your request, please let us know at the time of your, of your request when announced. At this time, I would like to introduce the members of the Architecture Review Board. Cedric Campbell, Elizabeth Brown, Barrett Penny, Willie Welch, John Hayden, John Foshi, David Payne, and Walter Bush. Our control, our planning control staff, Christy Anderson, Paula Richardson, and Russell Stringer. Uh, we do have a quorum. Um, and at this time, um, has, in, has everyone had a chance to read the minutes of the last uh, meeting? And if so, are there any corrections? additions or deletions. That being said, and no comments, the men stands approved. Our first uh, item of business presented by Judd Blunt, request for approval of painting and unservice uh, for the property located at 416 Cloverdale Road, Old Cloverdale. You may present your project. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I think she gave you a memo. We're no longer uh, want to paint the brick. We just want to paint the wood that's going to be covering the walk-in cooler. Um, I don't. So in, we're no longer going to be covering the walk-in cooler with brick. So we will not be painting the brick. Okay. The only thing we would be painting is the, the wood that will be covering the walk-in cooler. Okay. Do we have any uh, questions on the board? I couldn't quite understand you. You'll only be painting the wood that'll be covering what? The walk-in cooler. The walk-in cooler. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. It's where the drive-through used to be, sort of. It's where the, uh, the night deposit box used to be. And it kind of squares up that part of the building. The memo also mentions the windows, painting the windows. Do you want to yes. paint those as well? We were going to paint the windows, but as I understand it, they're already painted, so it would be irrelevant if we... Well, the memo said the window trim. Yes, sir. Okay, so yeah. you're, you're just at, are you asking permission to... Yes, to paint the windows as well, then. Yeah. Okay. okay. And the color selected matches number 21 on the palette. Any further questions from the board? No. Any questions from the floor? Chair, entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, approve as submitted. Second. We have a motion that's been. Should I say approved as uh, stated? We second, so uh, on the first thing that you did, so we just have to take that back. Uh, say it again, Chairman. You do, uh, as presented? Yeah, as presented, not su submitted, yes. Okay. We have a motion. Second. Second. Okay, it's second. Okay, uh, do we have any unreadiness on this matter? Any unreadiness? 
All in favor of that motion? Aye. All opposed? Okay, the project has been approved. Great, thank you. Okay. Uh, next uh, item up for presentation is by Brian Aspenwall. show okay okay let's go to the next one the next uh, item <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Tim Bolt Tim Bolt are you present mm -hmm. he said he was coming so okay. we'll, we can put him at the end if he shows up Okay. Good. Now let's move. Let's move. Just might go real quick. We'll get through with this quick. We got two more. Our next presenter, uh, <laughs> Emily <laughs> Wizenhunt, request for reapproval of previous. Approved garage renovation, additions, and rear yard fence for the property located at 805 Cloverdale Road or Cloverdale. Let me present you. Tom was in that. Okay, Tom. Okay. Um, yeah, we uh, had the approval a long time ago, and we finally just got the. Can't hardly hear you. Finally found a contractor that we could um, agree with, and he's ready to move ahead, so we just, we're not changing any of the plans for the fence or the building at all. Um, it's, it's all staying the same. We just took us a while to get to this point. That's all. I think there was supposed to also be, there was one other tree that we're going to, we were requesting to remove that. Uh, it's on there, Tom. And okay. You want to you take down a hackberry tree? Yeah, exactly. And Mr. Stringer been by and looked at it and it's just in a real bad spot. It's up against a, a real nice poplar that's on the church property, but kind of growing into it mm -hmm. and half kind of over the garage that, um, we'd love to just get it out so that the popper will kind of come up and um, and you can kind of see. I think she submitted a picture of it and to update to it. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> and probably at the very end. Okay. Yeah. Any further comments from the board? Any comments from the floor? Darby Forrester representing Old Cloverdale Association. We don't have any objections. <clears throat> we think it's look, gonna look great. Okay. Ms. Anderson, is this one coming before is due to it not being constructed in a certain time frame? Yes, um, the approvals are valid for a year. A year. Mm -hmm. um, so this had expired. And hopefully we won't be doing any more. <laughs> and don't want to overstep you, Mr. Stringer. Everything is fine. Yeah, I'm not going to advocate in favor of this particular tree. It's, it's, it's a non-contributor. <laughs> okay. All right. Chair, entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the petitioner request as submitted. Second. We have a motion that's been moved and probably second. Any unreadiness? Any unreadiness? Any unreadiness? All in favor of the motion? All opposed? The motion has been approved. Thank you very much. Look. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the petitioner's request as submitted. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> he has to present something. You huh? can't do that. I move that we suspend the rules and <laughs> approve the petitioner's request as submitted. Oh, no. You know, y'all have not off. watched Congress. Oh, uh, oh. We could do it. Turn this mic off. I'm trying to find it on the uh, <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, our next presenter, uh, presented by Barrett Penny, request for exterior alteration, including a rear addition with portico coche and a window replacement, driveway, tree removal, outbuilding demolition, alterations to existing balcony balustrade, removal and replacement of fencing and deck for the property located at 728 Felder Avenue, Old Cloverdale. 
Okay, you may present. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm Barrett Penny. Um, I'm here representing the new um, owners of uh, this residence on Felder, uh, Brian and Marcella Richardson. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work uh, with these folks, and they're very sensitive to the rich history of this home and have made great decisions, in my opinion, regarding how to handle the renovation uh, of this home. Um, I've also brought the general contractor along. If you don't know him, this is Guy Goulet. He is uh, local to the area. He actually lives across the street from the Scott F. Fitzgerald Museum, where he's renovated that home for the last several years. Um, so, Guy lives right down the road. Uh, he's an excellent contractor. He's a good fit for this type of project. I have prior experience uh, with Guy on other renovations. Um, just to go through the list of the modifications listed, I'll have to pack it uh, for each one of you at, at your chair. Uh, the first item is the railing, um, and there's a handout that I'd like to look at. Um, the existing railing above is located above the front door. It measures 28 inches from the second finished floor to the top rail of the railing. Um, our renovations include a sitting area, great hall that opens to this balcony. The owner intends to use it, so height as a, and safety is a concern uh, at this location. Um, the railing height should be raised to 42 inches. Um, what, what, what we've determined, originally it was, it was thought that the railing was original to the house. If you've seen this house before, the railing has a deflection right in the middle. Um, it's actually not the original railing. Further inspection revealed um, the post, the layers of paint actually revealed the original hand, handrail profile, um, which was much more detailed than what's there today. Um, we intend to, to, to keep the original post, to wrap those um, with copies of the existing moldings to replicate what's there and extend its height. We also want to replicate the existing handrail in wood and raise it to 42 inches. Um, we'd like to introduce a metal railing system to fill the space below that, uh, and that's what's represented in section here on your handout. And these would be one inch by one eighth inch custom metal shapes that would form the railing. To give you some brief history on the house as I go on, um, the home was built in 1908. Uh, pretty much all original. Uh, there's an addition to the back. Uh, it was probably built in the 70s. Um, um, a fire in the house destroyed the existing stair hall and one of the windows on uh, the uh, side elevation of the house. So we'd like to request uh, permission to go ahead and replace the sheet glass window with a one over one window. Um, the owner will also be renovating the stair hall at the interior because the, the balustrades are not original. Um, at the same time, we'd like to ask for permission to replace windows as we see needed. The windows that are existing are in varying states of decay. Some are in better shapes than others. The windows at the front porch, for example, that have been undercover are in pretty good shape. The windows on the side and the back are in much worse shape. Uh, so we'd like permission to replace it with the same window as we go forward um, with construction. <coughs> we'll also be replacing wood siding as needed. I understand that this does not require approval, but I do want to let you know we'll be matching it as closely as possible to the original. Most of the siding is in good shape except for a few uh, corner areas and uh, window jams. The addition that was added in the 70s is asymmetrical to the house um, and includes a kitchen and a sunroom. Uh, we would like to add an additional 270 square feet, making the addition symmetrical to the house. At the same time, we would remove the existing fenestrations and replace those with one over one windows on the sides with three French doors with the arched transom windows in the back. We'd like to propose a portico share be attached to the side of the house to allow the owner 
uh, to park out of the weather and to access the house under the cover of the roof. To do this, we propose a new concrete drive along the edge of the property. The portico chair will actually be attached to the addition, the secondary structure. So essentially we're maintaining as much as the primary structure, if not all of it. We'd also like permission to replace, to remove the existing deck and rebuild it. At the same time, and you'll find in your railing packet, there's an example of the fence. We'd like to remove the chain link fence that runs closest to Felder, the front of the backyard, and replace that with a steel picket six foot tall fence. There's an existing storage building in the backyard that's deteriorating. It's not original. We'd like permission to remove the storage shed. A couple other items in your handout. There's uh, pictures of a tree. This is located on the uh, southeast corner of the addition to the home. The base of the tree is approximately three to four feet from the structure and there's a bend in the top of the tree that actually hangs the tree over the kitchen. You can see that in the pictures in your, in your, in your, in your handout. Um, the, the roofs on this house are failing. Uh, we'll be replacing the roofs. Um, part of that is due, is due to organic matter buildup on these flat roofs. We need permission to trim limbs back from the edges of the roof prior to replacing with the new roofs, and we would like to take down the tree in the back as it's overhanging the roof. Um, currently, uh, the roof water discharge situation has created some foundation issues at the back of the house. Water is collected at one point from the main roof and the gutters around the addition. This has created some issues we have to deal with at grade. We're working with Danny Rains of Weatherford and Associates right now to uh, design a way to correct the issues at hand in place. Part of that is going to be pulling dirt back from the existing foundations, putting back in a clay field and repairing some things. This tree is, is in the way. Uh, we would like to, to pull dirt back completely around the addition. This tree's location will prohibit that from happening at the corner. We have a replacement site plan for replacement trees. It's located in the 11 by 17 handout. It's the third page. In the previous board meeting, uh, the board approved the removal of a magnolia tree pending approval of site plan for this property. Um, we're taking out the magnolia, a popcorn and a hackberry tree. These are six inch diameter trees, very small trees that are in the path of the driveway and the catapult in the back. Um, we propose to replace, the, to replace these uh, with a three inch caliper oak tree, three total and work with Russell Stringer on the exact location of these and the exact planning time. Our site plan proposes two located in the front and one located in the back. That's it? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stringer, you want to get to yours first? Is, that, is everything okay with you? I'm happy with the replacement plan. Okay. All right. Thank you. Board has any comments? I do. Barry, it's really a nice looking design, but uh, <clears throat> unless uh, uh, this couple, let's say, what are their names? Uh, Brian and Richard, Mar uh, Brian and Marcella Richardson, excuse me. Brian and Marcella. <laughs> unless they're a one car family, <laughs> I'm thinking that there could be some, I'm just saying, some possibilities for future uh, arguments as to who might have the car under the Portico share. I, I was going to ask, <laughs> how are you, who, who's going to get to park underneath? Yeah, I, I got an idea. I think I already knew that answer, but, <laughs> but did you all look at, uh, you, I noticed you've got an 11 foot set back there, um, perhaps making that a little wider and, you know, it, you, in elevation, it looks pretty wide as it is, but perhaps a, uh, two columns that separated each bay would, would break it down just a little bit 
you know, two interior columns, two exterior columns. I'm not trying to play architect here. I'm just saying that I don't know what the minimum setback is in that neighborhood. It's, it's 10 feet from the side. We would, we would really like to have a two uh, car, car uh, portico share. The 10 foot setback coupled with the, if you look at the site plan, the angular nature of the site, it's really limited on what we've been allowed to do. That's so an odd shape lock, isn't it, it Barry? I'm sorry? That's an odd shape lock. It's a, it is an odd shape lock. Yeah. Well, you know, if you were to, uh, um, to look at your, your uh, flower bed configuration with the brick, and I'm assuming those brick are about at ground level, I just think you could perhaps get, you know, within five feet or so. Now, what would you, uh, you'd have to get a, a, a variance. variance from whom? Um, that would go to the Board of Adjustment. Yeah. I just think as much money as you all are about to pour into this house that uh, it might be nice to explore that to the utmost and to come back and propose a variance if that's what it took to get Mr. Richardson's car under the cover. <laughs> I can tell you that one car parked behind the other will irritate somebody every day. <laughs> every day. Go move the car so uh -huh, I can get out. So can Sometimes get husbands have to get up early so that their wives can go to work every day. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Don't let them get you in trouble. <laughs> Certainly we'll discuss that with the owners and decide how we want to move forward. Thank you for the suggestion. I'm just trying to keep peace in the family. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Maybe keep it. Questions yes. about two items. One, are we leaving that planter box in the front? So the planter beds, um, they are built together with the masonry steps leading to the front porch. Okay. And um, we do want to leave those. Okay. Uh, it, the house used the, to have the, a, a walk that went up the center. Where they I'm that. That side thing on the, on the front of the house where that planter bed is used to have right. used not to be there. It used to be a center walk that went up to the front porch. Yes, the planter beds are not original. I know they've been there for a long time. They have 78. They yeah. it may have been done with the addition uh, on the back mm, of the house. Probably. Um, we may explore removing the planter beds if we really look at adding a second car They're to just the carport. Such a 70s thing. So. I mean, uh, I, that we may there. we may be back for that. Well, hey, we were there in the 70s, we Elizabeth, were, you Matthew, and I. We were young. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these people weren't born yet, but anyway. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not all that objectionable, but it, it would be nice to have it be more historic. In the I, I'm the person who's going to be speaking, who's going to be parking behind her car. <laughs> <laughs> Could you state your name? Could you state your name? This is uh, Brian. My name is Brian Richardson. I'm a uh, you're all just here in Montgomery. Um, so we certainly appreciate your thought, and we thought about that as well. Um, and it may be something that we come back to. We didn't realize this process was going to be so easy amongst you guys. So, you know, now that. <laughs> oh, we have a <laughs> no, we're just getting started. I'm just kidding. We're just getting so, started. <laughs> Um, but it, it certainly is something that we've considered and, uh, you know, we, we've looked at our other neighbors and some of them have to back out and things and that does you know, present some issues. Um, but, you know, we want to get started on the house. We're so excited about the house and getting this, you know, we're newly expecting in June, so we're not going to meet our timeline to have a baby in our new house, but it's going to be one of these things that, um, you know, we'll certainly um, consider those things and we've thought about them as well and Barrett's done a fantastic job of helping us to get something that keeps the, the historical nature of the house. We love the architecture of the house, and that's something that we're really excited about preserving and maybe reviving that area. You know, there are other houses doing renovations, and so we're really excited to be a part of that community. And we live right down the street right now, so it's not a big move for us. Um, but, you know, this, these are, your ideas are very much appreciated, and it's something that we, you know, may be coming back in a, in a future month and, and saying, hey, look, you know, we've changed our minds based off of your recommendations. <laughs> Barrett, on the Catawba tree, you said yes. the root system uh, would be compromised by the foundation work associated with the addition of the deck and the port of cachet, is that? The foundation work is still in the design phase. Mm -hmm. Danny is still designing. We anticipate pulling dirt back around the foundations. The majority of the damage is um, where the gutters collect, um, which is around the side of the addition, but the tree will prohibit access to the foundations at that corner. 
of okay. the House. Cut it now. Mm -hmm. Any further comments from the board? Well, I want to talk about the rail on the front. Yes. What I was taught to do was to reproduce the historic railing at the historic height and then add a horizontal metal piece at the height that you need it to be and maybe some smaller ones if you need to do that. We did that at the St. James Hotel in Selma with the historic rails because we had the historic rails too, which makes a difference. I just think a great big tall rail is, I mean, and it's on the front of the house, it's going to look disproportionate, just my opinion. It's a sensitive uh, design uh, task. Um, it is. It's important to raise the height from a safety issue, obviously. Um, in doing so, I think you have to be careful in how you design the railing. We've entertained several ideas. When we thought the railing was original, we entertained a secondary railing system to hold it up, take the deflection out of the middle, and provide that extra height. Mm -hmm. Realizing it wasn't original, it became less attractive of an option. Um, we also did some research on metal railings on other classic revival and Greek revival homes. Again, they were shorter, uh, but very intricate, and we're not sure that that's really what, what we want to do for this home. So uh, what we've come up with maintains the existing posts and recreates the top handrail. So I appreciate that they're trying to recreate those elements. It has to be taller. I think the shape of the, the custom railing may help reduce that scale some. Uh, with the negative space, the railing will be black in the post and the top rail white. Any further comments from the board? You might want to look at the um, metal railings on the Frank Lockwood Children's Home at Troy. And there are other Lockwood railings uh, not unlike that. I'm trying, I'll think, if I think of another one, I'll call you. Thank you. But the please. scale of the, the children's home building is about the same scale as this house, so you could get an idea from that. I mean, I'm not going to vote against this. It's just kind of. <coughs> Any further comments? Any comments from the floor? Darby Forrester representing Old Cloverdale Association. Um, could you go to the picture that shows the French doors? Is that part of the new addition, those French doors? Yes. The over, okay. The three French doors are right. part of the new addition. And are those going to be wood? Because you didn't say if it was, okay. Yes. All wood, right. Wood, so wood. everything on the addition is going to match what is currently on the house? We're going to like the wood windows and all that. Okay. Details. The okay, that was our only question. We weren't sure what the uh, those were going to be. We don't have a problem with removing. Of course, hackberry is nothing but a weed that's gone out of control, or a popcorn tree, and it's we're okay with getting rid of the worm tree so close to the house. Um, we think it looks great. Uh, we're glad that they have bought the house and um, are, are going to fix it up. It's been vacant for a while. And uh, we might need to talk about putting it on the home tour sometime, but we'll get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further comments from the board? Chair, entertain a motion. I move that we approve the project as submitted. Second. Second. Would you amend that to as presented since he presented the new railing tonight and it was yes, not I'm sorry. submitted? I, I move that we uh, approve the project as presented. Second. Okay. We have a motion that's been moved and seconded. Um, any unreadiness on this matter? Any unreadiness? Any unreadiness? All in favor of the motion? All opposed? The project has been approved. Thank you. Okay. And let it be known that Mr. Barrett was uh, presented. I guess. And then he didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> he recused himself. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Vaught is here. Number Mr. three. Mr. Vaught is here. Vaught is here. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, uh, well, we have uh, presenting Mr. Tim Vault request for approval of roof alteration for the property located at 39 North Capitol Parkway, St. Charles Capitol Heights. You may present your project. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think if you look at the photographs, there was a addition to the original house in the 40s. In, in the lower photograph, uh, you can see the really low flat roof addition from the, in the 1940s. And I bought the house 21 years ago. I have to re-roof it every four or five years. It's a, it was roll roofing when I bought the house. So what I would like to do is to build up a small pitched roof over that addition. I have to tear off that roof addition or the, the, the roof on that addition, and then build up a low pitched roof. I didn't really want it to match the rest of the house because the windows in the addition are substantially smaller and they won't match the scale. If you, the, the height of the window in the lower photograph is seven foot four. The height of the windows in the rest of the house are nine foot six. So if, I, if the addition was all the way up to match the original house, the windows would look completely out of place. What an improvement. Thank you. Excellent. Any comments, any other comments? I bet you said when you moved in that you were gonna do this right away. When I moved in, I wanted to put a second floor on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> But as I got older, I learned about money. <laughs> and the Architectural Review Board. And the Architectural Review Board. <laughs> Probably didn't have to come in. Okay. Any further comments? I, I have one extra thought, and it's not in one of these photographs, but during the rain yesterday, I was reminded there's one chimney that remains on the house on the far side. It, it doesn't operate to the fireplace. Um, it has a pretty good lean to it and it also leaks. To solve that leak problem I would have to cut in a reglet around the old mortar. I don't think the chimney would survive that. I'd also like the permission to take the chimney off. You're going to have to resubmit yeah. that on a separate, uh, isn't that right Ms. Anderson? It wasn't advertised as an item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We, we I, have just, to like I said, I just thought about it yesterday as the water came across the ceiling, so. I don't know how else too, things pop in the head all the time. I understand, Mr. Boyd, no problem. But it's in no, it's, it's not close to where this work is occurring, is that right? No, sir. Okay, so you can go ahead and move forward with this without. Yes, sir, okay. except that I wanted to re-roof the whole house. Okay. Any further comments? Any comments from the floor? As Tim's former neighbor, I will vouch that that roof has leaked in the back since I met him 16 years ago. So. <laughs> the the um, tarp failed yesterday, and there was about a half gallon in the laundry room. So, yeah, and the dogs really enjoyed it. If we were riding around with a checklist, figuring out which roofs were leakers, this one would be on our list. This one would, yeah, would be it. Okay. Chair and Tina motion. I move that we approve the motion as presented. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion that's been uh, moved to proper second. Uh, any unreadiness? Any unreadiness? Any unreadiness? All in favor of the motion? All opposed? Project has been approved. Thank you, sir. All right. No further questions. Okay. So since there's no. Two more things. More on the. Uh, yeah. Christy's got something for us. Yeah, we, we have need one. to elect chair and vice chair and then see if anybody has any comments about the um, memo you all were sent and the procedure for, for adopting an expedited review procedure for storage buildings so people can have small storage sheds. Um, and Charlie caught something that I hadn't put on there was, was that I didn't specify a color issue. So I've, I've written down palette color or match house. So. 
First thing I move that we keep the chairman and the vice chair for another year. Second. I would like to ask them, are they amenable to that? Well, they're amenable. <laughs> they're <Yeah>. amenable. <laughs> Cedric says with authority. <laughs> if not, I'll just quit in a half. Yeah. We'll double, we'll double yeah. your pay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'll yeah. second that motion, or did somebody already do that? I think I did. John did. That was, John pretty, John did. Did. That was pretty quick on me. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Okay. Well, and the next thing you said is the, uh, the color chart. Oh, um, no, the, um, the, mean, the, the shed. Chart, if anybody the, has any questions. Yeah. Um, I did deliver pallets to all the paint stores this morning, mm -hmm. um, and everybody told me they were going to hang them up. One, one actually said they were going to frame it and hang it up. So um, I have sent the changes to put on the website where you can see those now. And... Um, Paula very patiently labeled them, and another colleague helped me paint. So we have paint samples and paint chips in the office, and pallet boards now scattered around town. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, are you going to have any discussion with us about these outbuildings, or, do we, or should we have already read all this? Um, if you need a copy, I have a few copies of I it. I got a copy. To see if... Does anybody have, a couple of you emailed me. Um, does anybody have any other comments? This will come up at the February 13th HPC meeting. Um, I will be honest, uh, so David doesn't feel like he's the only one that haven't read it. I have not read it, um, gone through all the information yet, Ms. Anderson, I apologize. Okay. Move that we table this till next meeting. If that's okay. You, you can, and then we, we'd have to delay um, with HPC, but that's fine. Give the neighborhoods another month, because um, I know I, I sent it out and it went in the packets, but Darby hadn't seen it before this evening. Um, so it's certainly nothing we want to just jump into. Um, so if, if people do have comments, it, it would be good to make sure we have enough opportunity to do that. Okay. Christy, are you actually going to um, uh, approve several uh, of these prefab buildings uh, or suggest that they be pre-approved so that people that come in can? It, it would not be a pre-approval. Um, someone would still need to make application, show no. me what the shed looks like. Well, I mean, kind of like the windows. You know, we've approved several different window manufacturers. And we and did away with that because it was abused terribly which is why there's an application process for this because people took staff approvable to mean pre-approved and then started putting w windows in willy-nilly, some of which we had never seen before. Um, so we had some problems with that. So now all window replacement, unless it's a true divided light wood window, comes to you. So there are no pre-approved windows anymore? No, not unless you get a, a true divided light wood window to match. I must have missed that meeting. Well, now you know. <laughs> Would it be helpful if we all took two minutes and read through it so we could approve this tonight? Or Not necessarily. I mean, we can delay it. This has kind of been simmering for a while. It's, it's not like people start thinking about sheds in springtime, but... I was going to say you it's don't. It's been cold enough. Nobody's been really doing a whole lot of anything. I was going to say you you hadn't had hadn't had 23 people calling about can they put a shed in the back of their house yet? Have you? I've had a couple in the last couple of months, but one of them was big enough that it wouldn't have been covered by this anyway. Right. Um, because this really is a storage building for a lawnmower and a couple of bikes and a rake and right. and not much else. So. Mm -hmm. Um, someone was yeah, 100 like feet. You're talking by 24. 10 by 10 by 10, and, and you're like, not. No. And, and yeah, that's that's not a lot of room. Yeah. Right there, please. Uh, right. <coughs> HPC, yes. Second Tuesday of the month. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I want to see the concrete pad that goes to. I would like not to have to look at storage buildings anymore. Yes. Well, especially yeah. small ones. I mean. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I'm ready to vote for this. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, it, to be honest, it makes more work for me 
but yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this recommendation. Okay. Thereby eliminating the need for the ARB board to review storage buildings, which perhaps sometimes include five out of the nine applicants that we review. Right. Okay. So Second that's a motion. Yeah. Well, understand storage buildings under 100 square feet. That's right. Right. Yeah, that's right. That, that meet these parameters. Those, those parameters, right. Do you have a second? Didn't you second that, Mr. Foote? Yes. yes. I did. Sorry, okay. Second. There any unwritenness on that, man? Mr. Chair, I didn't bring my packet with me, so I, I, I won't uh, be able to vote for it. I mean, uh, the thing of it is, is uh, it's very self-explanatory. I mean, it, and it has a lot of red flags before it would even get to a certain point. So, I mean, I, I, I responded back and said it was cool, you know, it was yeah. cool with it. So. Yeah, the flow chart is pretty self explanatory. Mm -hmm. Any anything yeah. can get it kicked. Red flag. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there's, <laughs> if there's any question, but it would require that I go out and make sure that yeah. they don't already have five storage buildings in their backyard. Mm -hmm. And right. they're just telling me on the phone they've only got one. Um, yeah. And that the location is going to be where it needs to be. And they're going to have to show me a picture of what the darn thing's yeah. going to look like. Yeah. And then I can tell them how they might have to modify it to make it work. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to do those things, then they can come see y'all. So. We can tell okay. them no, too. Yeah. <laughs> can we have a chance to review that? No, go go, ahead. go ahead. Don't wait on me. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. It's a motion. Okay. Yeah. All in favor of the vote? All opposed? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just because I had read. Just because I had read. <laughs> <laughs> this is a so the sort of motion passed. So, all right. Is there anything else that we need? And that? if any, if anyone thinks of anything, I, oh, I wrote vinyl on my copy too, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure in case plastic wasn't clear enough. Um, if anybody wakes up in the middle of the night and thinks of something, email so me and it. we can. We can add it. Got some stored sheds on my mind. You never know. I know I'd like a new one in my backyard, but uh, I'd have to come before the board because the one existing one is slightly larger. But that's right. I wake up thinking about weird stuff sometimes. You just never know. <laughs> All right. With that being nothing said, old minds and hearts of clear, meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.